Hey guys, welcome back to How To Rip. In today's episode, I'm going to answer the question I get asked the most. And that's from people who are a beginner surfer and they're trying to progress to an intermediate level. And they're at that stage where their beginner board isn't cutting it anymore. So now we need to decide what board we're going to ride to help us improve quicker and get to that intermediate level. Do you guys love to surf? Well, so do I. Now you can check out my latest range of clothing called I Love Surf. All you need to do is jump onto the website, have a look at a product that you like, click Add to Cart, and then follow the prompts. Go to ilovesurf.co and you can find a range of clothing to suit your needs. Use the discount code ILOVE10 to get 10% off. So by this stage, I'm hoping that you've mastered the beginner basics and you're working on your intermediate level skills. Now, if you're still on your beginner board, I'm gonna assume it's either a big foamy or a big long board. Now, while these boards are fantastic for learning the basics, they make things a little bit harder when we wanna try and progress our surfing. Now, in addition to that, beginner boards and foam boards, they're really fun to surf when the waves aren't very good. So the kind of board I'm gonna recommend now, the intermediate board, is gonna still go really well in those average conditions that we get most of the time. So you don't have to worry about that. This board still goes well in mushy conditions, but it also gives you the added benefit of progressing quicker. So the sort of board I'm recommending isn't from any particular shaper, it's not a particular brand or model. It's just the style of board that I'm actually talking about. I'm talking about a fish, a high performance fish. It could be a quad, it could be a thruster, it could be a 20, it doesn't really matter. But the outline of that board lends itself really well to learning and mastering those intermediate level surf skills, which is far better than your beginner board because the beginner board is big and floaty. In saying that, the fish is still quite floaty and that's the secret here. We're going to learn how we actually order that intermediate board that still floats you really well but allows you to progress your surfing. So why does a beginner surfboard not lend itself to you progressing to an intermediate level? Well, the reason for that, if you think about it, is you buy a beginner board because you want it to be not very forgiving. You want it to be buoyant and you want it to sit in the water and not shake you off. The problem with that though is when we want to progress to an intermediate level and we want to start working on our speed generation and turning, we need a board that wants to generate speed and that wants to turn. And the bigger boards that you've chosen as a beginner, well we don't want them to turn right, we still want them to sit in the water. The intermediate board however needs to want to turn. So by choosing that fishy board, it's much shorter, it's a little bit thinner, it's going to be a little bit more reactive when you put it on rail. Not having all that board out in front that you would have with a long board or a big foamy means that board will turn easier for you and it's not going to get caught. The nose isn't going to grab and catch and make you nose dive. It's easier on a smaller fish board to start your turns. Another benefit to a high performance fish board 
is that we can take that board out the back much easier. Because it's shorter and a little bit less buoyant than our big board, we can duck dive it. It's a fantastic skill that every surfer needs to learn and it's really crucial for that beginner to intermediate level surfer, which you guys are if you're watching this video. We've got other tutorials on how to duck dive, so check them out, I'll link it in the description below. But having that smaller board means you can learn that skill. Now while you can still duck dive a long board, it's much harder. On the fish board, it's an easier skill to learn. Another reason why you want a high performance fish is for the days where the surf isn't very good. Now just recently, me and my friends that surf were having a conversation about this and I quite enjoy surfing small average waves because it's all I have access to quite often. Now some of my friends don't like surfing those waves, so what that means for them is that they don't surf as much, they don't get as much time in the water, therefore they don't get as much practice and they find it really frustrating when they eventually get in the water and surf those waves out of desperation and they really struggle. One reason for that and probably the biggest reason is inappropriate boards for those types of waves. A high performance fish makes surfing small average waves really enjoyable because it makes it easy, it helps you generate speed and it allows you to get over those flat, fat sections and that's what we want. We want to have fun in whichever conditions we get most of the time and like I said, for most of us it's small average mushy waves. High performance fish lends itself perfectly to those conditions. So hopefully you're understanding why a high performance fish is a really good board to look at when you're progressing from a beginner level surfer to an intermediate level surfer. It makes that transition a lot easier than if you just stayed on your beginner board and kept persisting on that. It's better to make the change, upgrade to a high performance fish, still keep your beginner board, but upgrade to that fish. Now, the next question is gonna be, what size should I get? Well, whichever shaper you choose to go with, whichever model fish you choose to go with, speak to that shaper specifically. You can tell them how tall you are, how much you weigh, your experience, but most importantly, you gotta tell them what board you're riding now, the dimensions of that, how much volume it has. With all that information, the shaper can then make the perfect board for you and where you're at now. Now I know that it could come as a big shock to some of you who have been on big boards, eight foot, nine foot, you've been learning on that board, and then making the change to something that's much shorter like this, potentially that's even shorter than you, can seem scary and daunting. But you must remember that this board here, for example, still has the amount of volume that I need for my surfing. It's just squished into a compact version. It's the same for you. When you speak to that shaper and you say, hey look, I've been riding 40 liters, but now I want to get a high performance fish, what kind of board should I get? They might say, all right, well, you've been riding 40 liters, so maybe considering that the board's going to be a little bit smaller, a little bit more high performance, and you're starting to get better, they might recommend 35 liters as an example. And that board will still be good for you. But like I said, speak to the shaper and they'll nail it for you. Guys, thanks for watching the video today. I hope that now you have a better understanding of the sort of board that you need to help you progress your surfing. While a beginner surfboard is good and you should still keep it and use it from time to time, an intermediate board will help you progress your surfing faster. And I think you now know the reasons why. Remember to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and comment below to let us know what other videos you want to see. Thanks for watching guys, catch you in the surf. Something like this one. On the wave, then looking.